وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ فَسَتُبْصِرُ وَيُبْصِرُونَ بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام لرسول الله وعليه وسلم أجمعين ثم ما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So inshallah just continuing on um, regards the, the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So previously we mentioned, we talked about uh, a bit, um, uh, just a bit uh, a bit in depth just regarding the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the name Muhammad. And we mentioned a bit of the Arabic about where this name comes from in terms of the root word, in terms of the fact that uh, it's, an, it's a maf'ul meaning, it has a meaning of um, being praised, uh, the, the name Muhammad is the one being continually, non-stop, every second of the day, continually praised. And this praise is happening by, uh, it could be by anyone doing the praising in terms of the human beings, angels, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the jinn. So this is uh, just regards how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his status is so high on the, um, in the world. And that is actually reflected in, this, uh, in the name Muhammad, which was revealed miraculously, we understand. Um, from narrations um, to his mother who um, named him as such and Ahmed is the other name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so we talked about this in the previous session so in this week inshallah we will continue I just wanted to mention some other uh, um, names the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he himself mentions in a hadith he mentions himself and um, the other names that he has which we will go through, and inshallah, you know, we'll see that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is also he does have other names as well. So, the, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There's actually a narration from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There's a narration. There's a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "I have many names." So he's saying, "I have many names." So he says this in a narration: "I am Muhammad. I am Ahmed." So these two names we know about. He goes on to say, I am, I am Al-Mahi. I am Al-Mahi. What's Al-Mahi? Who is Al-Mahi? Al-Mahi is the one who erases, who eradicates, who, who removes. So he is, he's saying, والسلام, I am Al-Mahi. I am the one who erases, who eradicates. In other words, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he removed, he erased kufr, he, dis, he erased disbelief through me. So I am Al-Mahi. I am the one that erases I remove and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he removed kufr through me right you understand and he says I am al-hashir I am al-hashir al-hashir is the one who gathers the one who gathers that the people so this is what Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying I am al-hashir also that's another name which means the one who gathers so that people have gathered at my feet they've gathered, they've gathered at my feet the people have come to me from far and wide to take their deen, to take their religion, you know, because he's gathered all the people together by calling them to La ilaha illallah. He is Al Hashir. He's the one that gathers all the people. All the people have come to him and they've accepted Islam. So he gathers. Then he says, Wa ana akib. Wa ana akib. And I am, I am akib. Akib meaning there is no new prophet to come after me. I am akib. Akib means. The one who comes last, the one who comes last, and you know, comes it comes the one who comes at the end because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we know he was the last, he was the last fight of the messengers, right? And that's why, um, you know, in Arabic, you look at the the foot, the heel of the foot, the heel of the foot is actually called um, uh, al, or the heel of the foot is called akab, akab. It's called akab, which is the plural of, which is the plural meaning heels, and this is uh, comes from. Akib, so which is you know the heel of the foot meaning is at the end, so that's where this comes from. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is the last. He's he's the last of the messengers. He is Akib, and he says he said that in the hadith in the narration. And there are some other narrations in which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also says, "I am al Khatim. I am al Khatim. Al Khatim means the seal. I am the seal, right? The seal of the prophets. So there's no more. There's no new prophets." To come after me, I am also al Khatim, right? So you see, um, so far, what other names have we? Do we have the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? We've had him uh, himself is him saying, you know, I am Muhammad, I am Ahmed, I am Al Mahi, 
the one who raises, the one who eradicates. I am Al-Hashir, the one who gathers. I am um, Akib, the one that comes at the end, right? I'm the final messenger. I am Al-Khatim. I am Al-Khatim. Khatim uh, and Nabi, I'm the final, I'm the last, I'm the seal, I'm the seal of the messengers. You know, there's no new messengers to come after me, right? To some of the names we've gone through. And there's another narration yet in which the Prophet وسلم, he mentions that وَأَنَا الْمُقَفِّي وَأَنَا ال وَأَنَا الْمُقَفِّي that I am الْمُقَفِّي what's uh, الْمُقَفِّي? I am the cap. I am the cap. I am the seal on the prophethood. So this is similar, similar to al uh, al khatim, right? It's, it's similar to al khatim. I am al mukaffi. I am the seal. You know, I'm the seal of the prophet. So there's no other prophet that's going to come after me. That's I'm the seal. I'm the final prophet. And the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He also says, wa ana and I am wa ana nabiyu rahma. I am wa ana nabiyu rahma. I am also the prophet of rahma. Rahma. Uh, has a vast meaning. Um, so we understand it as, I, I am um, the prophet of Rahmah, the uh, prophet of love, of mercy, you know, of kindness. I am the prophet uh, of Rahmah. And uh, there's another narration yet, mentions another name for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who says, well, Anna, another name is Nabiul Mulahim. Mulahim. Nabiul Mulahim, right? And what does this mean? Malhama or Mulahim, it means battles or war situations. You know, Malhama, which is literally this, this is like a battle or war situation. And he's saying, I am the prophet of Mulahim, Mulahim. So him saying, Prophet is saying, I am the prophet that will establish the deen and defend the deen through battles, basically. So he's saying, I am the prophet of, of battles, of wars, of someone who defends the deen through battles. Right, so he, um, what we understand is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was the brave, bravest of all people. He was the bravest of all people, more than any soldiers. You know, you see nowadays, you see, you know, in various countries, you see the like, armies, you see soldiers, you see like in the news, you see like um, in the television, you, you see soldiers and countries displaying their strength through their armies and soldiers. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, and these soldiers are well respected by the countries and people, right? You know, people think, well, if you're in the army, if you're a soldier. You're well uh, respected, you're strong, you're brave. Well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's even braver than any soldier in the world, right? You, you with me? He's he's a strong, he's a powerful messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen him and he's saying, I am the I am Nabi Nabiul Mul Mulahim, Mulahim, the one the, the prophet of battles, of the one who's gonna defend the deen through uh, battles, through through wars, through you know, defending Islam. So he's like he's brave. And this concept, you know, um, we have of um, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like this image we have of him, he's a strong, he's a powerful, he's like, you know, like a role model, uh, someone who's a role model, who's um, people look up to, especially like young, maybe young adults, they, they want somebody who's strong, who's, you know, like you have all these, um, you have these figures, you have these cartoons, you have these um, uh, figures that the society portrays, who's strong, who's the person nowadays, who do young children, uh, young adults, young children look up to? People like Superman, you know, these sort of people uh, in our day as well. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is more of a role model. He's he's the most, he's powerful. He's much bigger, much more of a role model to us. He is um, than any of these figures or so that society put out puts out for us. So this is just something to understand. You know, he's, he's very strong. He's a brave messenger. So he's the Prophet of Nabil Mullahim. Okay, good. You with me? Inshallah, so far uh, it's clear, the different names of the Prophet Sallallahu that he himself is saying through a hadith, through his words. Okay, so these narrations, in which these names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have been mentioned, we've just gone through, and just continuing, so I hope it's clear so far. Now, as well as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as well as um, he himself telling us what are the names he has, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also addresses the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Qur'an, in the Qur'an, and we know this. At the same time, you know, scholars say that uh, the, the, there are names of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the name to which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he calls him in the Qur'an, right? And it's not just by names. So this is a, a point to note. It's not just names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He also gives him titles 
and descriptions. So he describes the Prophet وسلم, by a title. He describes him um, by, by a description. He gives him a name. And this is in the Quran. So we'll just go through some of these examples. Alas Mantala, he addresses uh, the Prophet وسلم, in the Quran as a Rasul. As a Rasul, as a Nabi. He calls him a Nabi, a Rasul. So these are titles, isn't it? Like a description. Uh, he's, a, he's a Rasul, he's a Nabi. Alas Mantala calls him Da'i. Ilallah, da'i ilallah, like he is a caller. So this is like a um, a title, a description. He's a da'i ilallah. He's a caller towards Allah. He calls towards Allah subhanahu wa taala. That's another. Um, that's how Allah subhanahu wa taala addresses him in the Quran. He also calls him Muzammil and Mudathir. Right? You you know the surahs, Surah Al Muzammil and Surah Al Mudathir. Well, these are titles, titles which Allah subhanahu wa taala has given to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muzammil and Mudathir. Allah subhanahu wa taala calls him. Siraj, Siraj. So Siraj, you know, like the the sun, uh, bright shining light. Siraj and Munir, Munir, Munir. You know, uh, guidance, light as well. But Siraj is the bright shining light. Munir is also light. It's also, you know, he's he's a source of guidance. This is how Allah Subhanahu wa Taala calls him in the Quran, describes him by these uh, words, and that he's also Nabiu Rahma, which we went through in the Hadith as well. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala he refers to him as a Nabiu Rahma, Prophet of love and mercy, also. Nabiyu Nur, Nabiyu Nur. He's a prophet of light, prophet of light. So again, this so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is using these terms to describe the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran. He's also Nabiyu Shifaa, Nabiyu Shifaa. He's also a prophet of Shifaa, Shifaa of healing, right? He's also a prophet of Shifaa. He's also Nabiyul Hidayah, Nabiyul Hidayah. He's also a prophet of guidance. So you know, Subhanallah, like uh, these amazing terms Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is using to describe the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was also Nabiul Furqan, Nabiul Furqan. How Allah Subhanahu wa Taala describes him, Furqan, which we went through previously, is the is the Prophet of the Criterion. Like he is, you know, like the judge, uh, the Criterion. What's right and what's wrong? He's the Furqan. He's like the the judge. He'll tell us what's right, what's wrong. He's the Nabiul Furqan. Also, how else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala address the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Calls him, he is al-Bashir. Al-Bashir. So he's a giver of good news, right? He's al-Bashir and he's an nadir So these words, um, I guess they come together because you have your hope and you have your fear. Like al-Bashir is the one who gives good news. Not only does he give good news, like he tells people about, you know, Jannah and the rewards, but there has to be a balance. So he's also an nadir He's warning people. He's warning people at the same time of hellfire and, you know, punishment. So he's al-Bashir and an nadir So this is also how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he describes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are just some of the titles, the descriptions and the names of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. So I hope that's clear, right? So again, like we said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he addresses him by names, titles, and descriptions in the Qur'an. Okay, good. Now, there's um, one more thing we'll mention regarding the names. What Hassan, Hassan bin Thabit said, right? What Hassan bin Thabit said. So Hassan bin Thabit, if you know, he was a personal poet, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's a personal poet. Like he was also used to make, he used to make like uh, poetry, you know, uh, praising the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, describing him. So he says, Hassan bin Thabit, he says that his name, the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his name Muhammad, his name was split from the name of Allah. His name was split from the name of Allah. You know, that's what he says. He says, the name Muhammad is split from the name of Allah, meaning that his name was directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he would be honored. So why does he um, say this? Like, How does he describe this? How does he justify this? He says the name Muhammad is split from the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to honor the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Dhul Arsh. He's Dhul Arsh. He's the one who is on the throne, right? He's on the throne. So he is Mahmud. Mahmud. So Mahmud is again, is a, um, if you remember from last week, is an ism. Maf'ul is an ism, ism maf'ul, meaning Mahmud also means the one who is praised. So again, it's a, a, another uh, meaning, a, another word, um, which is, is, is basically the meaning is the one who is praised. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Abdul Arsh, he's on the throne, he's 
Mahmud. He's the one who is praised, praised by you know, the angels, the creation. So Allah is Mahmud, and the Prophet وسلم, is Muhammad, and he's also the one who's continually praised. So subhanAllah, both mean the one who is praised, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Mahmud, the Prophet وسلم, is Muhammad. So these are the words of Hassan uh, bin Thabit, uh, the poet. He says that the praise of the Prophet وسلم, is, you know, and the both are being praised. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being praised. He's um, Mahmud, and the Prophet وسلم, is being praised. He is Muhammad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored the Prophet وسلم, to give him, you know, a name directly from the um from the name, one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's something, subhanAllah, you know, uh, very um it's a very, a very high, um, high status, very high rank uh, of the Prophet sallallahu Just look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors him. And he mentions continually his name in the Quran. I mean, just think like um, if your name continually, you know, if just uh, hypothetically, just imagine your name. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned your name in the Quran and gave you like 10 or 15 different titles and described you. Like, you know, you are a person of guidance. You're the person of light. You're the person of the criterion. You are a rahmah. Just, just think like, how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this um, you know, this um person, this Muhammad uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, just, you know, the last and final messenger to to honor him such like that in the Quran. So, you know, you can begin to understand um just uh, our very high status of the Prophet. Okay. Okay, good. So um finally, so this is just um talking about the names of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and um that was just sort of covering all of that. So inshallah, the, the, the final point, last point we want to mention today is something from the sunnah of all messengers, okay? There's something from the practice of all the messengers. So this is another discussion. This is like a side discussion. And it's actually um, something which, um, you know, um, was even, I even thought, okay, do we need to mention this or not? Like, shall we mention it or shall we not mention it? Because, you know, um, when we go to the seerah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we talk about any area of our deen, we always discuss, um, whenever we discuss any like ilm, uh, ilm, knowledge, we will always make sure it's important and it's relevant in, in our lives, right? It's practical. That's what we also we always make sure. It's practical. It's practical to our lives. So, you know, for example, um, if it's practical, then you can properly follow the Prophet wasallam. You can change things about yourselves to be more like the Prophet wasallam. You, like, you see him do something and you basically follow him. You know, you get direct benefit from it. So we can receive guidance this way because, you know, he's a role model, right? And we talk about something practical. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he woke up, he said this to our, you know, he, he acted in this way. We follow that so we can gain benefit. So, you know, through following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how, what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, you know, the, the Messenger of Allah is the best example for you. But at the same time, you know, part of the purpose of the series that we're doing, the seerah, the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is also we're doing it, properly we're taking our time we're going in depth we're going into deep uh you know i, mean, I th want to cover like you know all the issues really every issue so you're aware of all the like the different discussions so uh you know we want to discuss everything so we will briefly touch upon something uh, these in-depth issues like for example you know we talked about okay the parents of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam what would happen to them you know like that's not a really an issue of our iman of our belief uh, you know it's something that we're going to be asked about on the day of judgment but it's just something that because we're going through the seerah is something that um, we should be aware of that there are these discussions, right? You with me? So I'm just going to talk about one thing, well, quite briefly, and um, you know, this this might even you know might offend some people as well, actually. But nevertheless, you know, understand this is an issue that there are some narrations. So the, the point is that there there are narrations which talk about this from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is a matter of our deen, and the, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he talks about this directly in a narration. And this is something that the scholars have also discussed previously. So what are we going to discuss? What's the issue? In the Hadith, the Prophet وسلم, in an authentic narration, Prophet وسلم, says there are 10 things, there are 10 things that are from the life, the sunnah, the lifestyle, the practice of all the messengers. The Prophet وسلم, is saying this in the authentic Hadith. There are 10 things which are part of the lifestyle, the practice of all the messengers, right? One of those 10 things is khatna, circumcision, khatna, right? So this is from the sunnah of the Prophet And circumcision, um, you know, what you do, you know, the baby boys when they're born, like, you know, circumcision, they're circumcised. This is part of our deen. It's a very important part, right? It's it's the identity of a Muslim male, right? Circumcision is like every baby boy that's born, this has to happen 
there's 10 things that the Prophet Sallallahu said that they are part that um, they're a part of the lifestyle of all the messengers, right? They're part of the lifestyle of all the messengers. So one of those things, like we said, is circumcision. There's a discussion whether or not the Prophet Sallallahu he was circumcised uh, or not, meaning, you know, did this happen like uh, when he was born or, or after? So there's a couple of opinions here. So there's some opinions, some scholars, there are some narrations from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and there's a discussion again here, you know, as to how authentic these narrations are. But nevertheless, there are narrations. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that when I was born in this world, he says, when I was born, I was already circumcised, like it's a miracle. He was born circumcised without the need. And that's a miracle in itself. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he actually goes on to say in a narration that no one ever saw or witnessed my private parts. Like no one saw witnessed my private parts. And this was part of the honor that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala he gave to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So again, these narrations are mentioned and they're actually there. And there's a discussion on this. So that's that's one opinion that he was born like circumcised miraculously without the need. The other opinion is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was actually circumcised by his grandfather. So by his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. So some scholars of Hadith, right? Some scholars of the Seerah say the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was actually circumcised by his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, right? So when the child was born, what the narration says, Abdul Muttalib, he took the child, baby, uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, took the baby, took him to the Kaaba, and he performed the circumcision himself. You know, nowadays you have to go to a surgery, you go to like a doctor, you go to a surgeon, um, and they do the procedure. Abdul Muttalib, he took the baby by himself. This is another opinion. And he circumcised the Prophet ﷺ by himself. So even in the opinion of these of those scholars, that the Prophet ﷺ, he was actually circumcised after his birth by another person, they still say that it was only it was his own grandfather that did it, right? Abdul Muttalib did this. So he chose to do it himself. And there's an honor in this because that's the privacy or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being maintained. Like his, his privacy is being maintained because it's not being done by an outside person. It's being done by the one, the, the male the male custodian of the child, the male guardian, because remember, his father Abdullah had already died. So Abdul Muttalib took that responsibility. So, you know, the thing is, what we can just get from this discussion is that um, there's two opinions, like we said, very well-established scholars of Hadith, scholars of the Sira, who are of the two... Both these opinions that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, one of them, one group says that he was not circumcised by any human being, but he was born circumcised. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says in a narration that when I was born, like we said, um, when I was born in the world, I was already circumcised. And this was how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created me. And actually, you know, um, the narration also mentions something else, which is all, and also another miracle. It mentions that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born, the umbilical cord, the cord that joins the baby to the mother, the umbilical the cord, umbilical cord, the Prophet ﷺ was born, the umbilical cord was already cut off. It was already cut off. Nowadays, when baby is born, the, the, um, the nurses, they have to cut off the cord. Like the cord is attaching the baby to the mother. The Prophet ﷺ, in the narration, he mentions that the cord, the narration mentions the cord was already cut off. This was automatically a miracle when the Prophet ﷺ was born. And he was already circumcised and the cord was cut off. So from these narrations, we said, like we said, that's another miracle, straight from birth. And then he, the Prophet ﷺ, he goes on uh, to say in the narration that nobody's witnessed my private parts, like we mentioned. And this wasn't done, you know, this wasn't all done publicly. And that was something that, you know, um, scholars feel comfortable. And other scholars say, you know, exactly the grandfather, Prophet ﷺ, who performed this. Nevertheless, you know, just to mention this, that th these opinions exist, both opinions are there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows best. Um, what happened and like we said this is not an issue of like our iman or faith or you know like we said we we when we're studying the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in detail in the seerah so we're going through like a bit in depth about every aspect of the seerah every aspect of the life so you understand and um what we do know you know just summarizing that it's the sunnah of all the messengers and every muslim male you know that um all the message the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam all the messengers that were circumcised how that happened Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and um, that's what we've discussed, okay? And this is, don't forget, you know, that this is all planned. This is all planned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to keep, you know, it's a divinely arranged to give honor and privacy and respect to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, good. So the final thing, just to end, just before we end, 
Um, you know, that's just um, a bit of a discussion we had on the rights of the, of the birth and where the child is born, you know, there's certain rights, certain things you do. And there's one more right that you had. So that was one thing when a baby is born. What else do you do when a baby is born? Um, there's another thing we do. And that's what we just briefly talk about. Just to finish off, a huge feast, Akika. So what happens when a baby is born? So, you know, uh, it goes on to talk about the fact that, you know, um, Abdul Muttalib, he waited till the seventh day. So, you know, after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been born, on the seventh day, what does he do? What does he do? After the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been born, on that day, um, he arranges, the grandfather arranges a big, massive feast, a big feast to honor the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, just like we have the Akika, the Akika, which is a, a, a huge feast. Similarly, this was a habit. This was a habit, a tradition of, of the Arabs that obviously had been um, passed down to them through uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam. So, you know, if you think about it, where are they getting this from? Like, how do they know that when the baby is born, you have to do the Akika? How do they know? Because this was something that remained from the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam many, many generations back. Like we said, you know, a lot of the things were lost from the, the Milla, the, the practice of the, the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the faith, it was practically lost, isn't it, at that time? Um, but what did remain was, this is something that remained, that when a baby is born, you have to do the Akika. So this is directly from the religion of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam. It's a celebration uh, of the birth feast. Celebrating the birth of a child, you pre pre prepare a whole, a huge feast. So that's something that we have, obviously, in Islam as well, okay? So on the seventh day of the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Abdul Muttalib arranged a very huge feast. Everybody in Mecca was invited to this feast. And they all came and they all celebrated the birth of the Prophet Wasallam. So this is uh, just something that we wanted to mention as well. And inshallah, this actually, it concludes our discussion. And um, what we wanted to cover today about, you know, is talking about um, the other names of Prophet Wasallam, the Sunnah of all the messengers and, um, you know, of all the baby boys which are born and a huge feast which was prepared. So, you know, you can see, we went, we've gone through the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu the miracles that took place in regards, um, you know, at the time of his birth, the miracles in his household, and generally just, um, you know, the other th miracles which are taking place. So, inshallah, next week, we'll uh, continue with uh, another discussion, which is going to be just talking very briefly about, you know, um, Marking like the birth date of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is it something that you do? Do you celebrate his birth date? And just going forward, we're going to talk about some other miracles which happened elsewhere in the world. Like we talked about some things which happened there and then in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the light, you know, which, which shone out, you know, what the people witnessed in his household. But what happened, some miracles, some, and again, there's some um, narrations, there's some um, different opinions, whether the narrations, how authentic they are, but they exist. What happened in the rest of the world at the time the Prophet وسلم, when he was born? So we'll go on, we'll have these discussions. So inshallah, that's um, all we'll cover for today. We'll take any questions or comments. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashadu Allah ilaha 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 nastagfiruka na tubu alaik. Mayra subhanahu ta'ala, he gave us a love for the Prophet وسلم, give us the ability to um, follow um, him, to, to have him as our role model, to understand his life. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to, to follow him.